Hi, welcome to Pathology Riddles. In the last video, we spoke about classification, etiology, and pathogenesis of breast carcinoma. Today, we will be learning about morphology, metastasis, and prognosis of breast carcinoma. Coming to morphology, the breast is divided into four quadrants. There is the upper outer quadrant, there is upper inner quadrant, there is lower inner quadrant, and there is lower outer quadrant as well as a central region. So the most of the breast carcinomas arise in upper outer quadrant that constitutes around 50% of all the breast carcinomas and 20% of the breast carcinomas will arise from the central area. 4% of the breast carcinomas will be bilateral. There are two morphologic types of non-invasive breast carcinoma. One is called ductal carcinoma in C2 or DCIS while other is called lobular carcinoma in situ or LCIS. Irrespective of their name, both arise from terminal ducts. So coming to ductal carcinoma in situ, for that you should know the normal architecture. So as you can see here, this is the normal architecture of breast. There is a duct which is leading to all the acini forming a lobule. Now in DCIS or ductal carcinoma in situ, this will be distorted. There will be a say, space which will look like a duct and it will be filled with all the atypical cells. The only difference between ductal carcinoma and ductal carcinoma in situ is that the cells would not be coming out of the basement membrane. So it will all be surrounded by a basement membrane which is not infiltrated in case of ductal carcinoma in situ. So in case of lobular carcinoma in situ, as you can see, the normal architecture again distorted, the lobules are increased in size. Again, it will be surrounded by basement membrane, which will be preventing any of those tumor cells to come out. So it is called lobular carcinoma in situ. So coming to different morphological variants of DCIS or ductal carcinoma in situ. So we start off with solid variant. In cases of solid variant, you can see the whole thing is filled up with cells and it looks completely solid. Coming to comedo variant. Now in comedo variant, it looks like solid variant, but there is a central large area of necrosis. So this is called comedo variant. Then there is a cribriform variant. Now cribriform looks like sieve like pattern so there will be small small holes in between the group of cells. So this is cribriform variant. So two more variants are papillary and micropapillary. So both have similar architecture. Both have cells which are elongated in papillae form. The only difference between papillary and micropapillary is the presence of fibrovascular stalk in papillary while the absence of fibrovascular stock in micropapillary. So morphologically, according to nuclear appearance, you can grade it into low nuclear grade or high nuclear grade. So in cases of low nuclear grade, the nucleus will be very bland and monotonous. While in cases of high nuclear grade, the nucleus will have this pleomorphic appearance. Every cell will have a different shaped nucleus. So this is all about your ductal carcinoma in situ variants, morphological variants of ductal carcinoma in situ. Now let's see what is Paget's disease of nipple. Basically in Paget's disease of nipple, the DCIS, the cells which go along the lactiferous ducts. So all these cells will grow along the lactiferous ducts, but they are still limited by the basement membrane. As you can see here, the basement membrane is intact and tumor cells are not infiltrating into it. So, the basement membrane is never breached in cases of uh, Paget's disease of nipple. So, how does Paget's disease of nipple grossly look like? It produces basically crusting over the nipple and areolar skin. How do you diagnose it? You have to do scraping of that crusting or by doing biopsy. So, coming to lobular carcinoma in C2. This is basically a incidental findings. Now, uh, ductal carcinoma in C2 can sometimes be diagnosed because of microcalcifications, which you use, which you see in mammography test. 
but lobular carcinoma in situ does not have this microcalcification so it is not easily detectable by mammography it is a marker of increased risk of carcinoma in both same or contralateral breast so coming to morphology of lobular carcinoma in situ morphologically the cells of lobular carcinoma in situ are uniform they are monomorphic with bland to round nuclei they are loosely arranged cohesive clusters within the lobules so here you can see these are loosely arranged as well as cohesive so what do you mean by loosely cohesive clusters basically the cells in breast or other glandular tissue are attached to each other due to expression of this e catherine gene in lobular carcinoma in situ there is a mutation of this e catherine gene so there is dysfunction of e catherine so there is loss of cellular adhesion which leads to these uh, loosely uh, cohesive clusters of cells in lobular carcinoma in situ so coming to invasive carcinoma the term invasive carcinoma is all the carcinomas which are not subclassified into any special type so invasive carcinoma nos type so not of special type so coming to the most common type of breast carcinoma which is infiltrating ductal carcinoma not of special type so it is associated with its precursor lesion which is ductal carcinoma in situ so how do we detect it grossly first clinically the patient will come with a hard irregular lump in the breast mostly as we already discussed in the upper outer quadrant now when you get the specimen you will have to cut the specimen and see the tumor morphology so grossly it will be very hard and irregular grayish white mass coming to microscopy of infiltrating ductal carcinoma so it can range from well developed tubules and low grade nuclei to tumors which have sheets of anaplastic cells which have angry looking nuclei most of the invasive ductal carcinomas will produce this tissue reaction called desmoplastic response which results in hardness of tumor basically what is desmoplastic reaction this is uh, production of excessive fibrosis in surrounding tissue in this slide you can see basically well formed tubules surrounded by fibrosis or desmoplastic reaction so the grading of breast carcinoma is done on the basis of three components the first component is tubule formation second component is nuclear pleomorphism and third component is mitotic count according to the level of tubule formation nuclear pleomorphism and mitotic count scores are given these scores are added up and the total score is considered on the basis of the score grading can be given grade 1 is well differentiated grade 2 is moderately differentiated and grade 3 is poorly differentiated calcification and necrosis can also be seen in a tumor next is infiltrating ductal carcinoma with medullary pattern medulla is basically a latin term for marrow so tumor is grossly soft pale gray and fleshy it is well circumscribed with pushing borders usually what you find is infiltrating borders but medullary tumor medullary uh, carcinoma will have pushing borders microscopically there will be sheets of large anaplastic cells which are associated with lot of lymphocytic infiltrate which are predominantly composed of t lymphocytes coming to lobular carcinoma so lobular carcinoma grossly shows a rounded mass which is difficult to differentiate from benign tumors microscopically the cells are discohesive and they grow in a single file which is due to lack of e catherine basically it is called also called indian file pattern because the red indians which were in there in america used to walk in a single file so that their enemies cannot estimate their numbers next is mucinous carcinoma in cases of mucinous carcinoma grossly the tumor will be very soft and rubbery when you cut the tumor lot of blue gelatinous material will come out in microscopy 
you can see these are the tumor cells which are surrounded by large lakes of mucin so they will be basically floating in a big pool of mucin in tubular carcinoma microscopically we will find tubules with low grade nuclei can you guess what the stain is so this is a immunohistochemistry stain for estrogen receptors which is done in breast carcinoma in breast carcinoma you do ihc for er pr and her2 new so in cases of estrogen receptor you will see the stain happening in the nucleus while in case of her2 new it will be happening in the membrane so how does breast carcinoma spread so directly it can infiltrate the skin including nipple areolar complex and inside it can infiltrate into the chest wall through lymphatics it can go to axillary internal mammary and supraclavicular lymph nodes through hematogenous spread it can go to lung liver brain bone in cases of lobular carcinoma however there is a different pattern of spread there so it can go to cerebrospinal fluid serosal surfaces gastrointestinal tract ovary and uterus bone marrow which makes it difficult to diagnose before it is too late next we shall discuss about the prognosis by evaluating a combination of histologic appearance grading expression of hormone receptors and expression of her2 new you can give a prognosis to the patient about the 5 year survival and different modalities of treatment which can be used in the patient's case so triple negative cancers are more likely to metastasize to brain and viscera while er positive cancers are more likely to metastasize to bones staging stage is actually a measure of extent of the tumor at the time of diagnosis so most popular is tnm staging so t stands for <clears throat> size of the primary tumor n stands for involvement of regional lymph nodes while m stands for distant metastasis so once you have staged the tumor according to the tnm staging it will give you the prognosis so stage 1 survival is around 86% after 10 years stage 2 survival declines to 71% stage 3 54% of the patient survive and stage 4 the survival is very poor that is only 11% after 10 years rna expression profiling this is a newer method of sub classifying cancers so it can be classified into luminal her2 new rich and basal like so these assays have the ability to identify the patients with slow growing or anti estrogen responsive cancers which can be spared the toxicity of chemotherapy so coming to treatment treatment can be breast conservative surgery and radiotherapy or mastectomy and systemic therapy including endocrine chemotherapy and targeted therapies in today's video we discussed about morphology metastasis prognosis and treatment of breast carcinoma i hope the things are clear to you if you have any doubts please write to us in the comment below If you like this video do share and subscribe it motivates us to make more videos like this this is Dr Bismay signing out till we meet the next time